there are religions out there, denominations, that one short way or another, they will teach that baptism is a means of salvation. Without baptism, you are in danger of judgment. And there are religions and denominations out there. If you weren't baptized by their official, their church, a sacrament, you are in danger with God. That's a heresy. And there are Baptists out there who You know, if you weren't baptized in their their church, the Baptist Briders and all that, baptism is one of those things that there are just so many branches of baptism, denomination, religion, beliefs, this and that, and we're we're not going to look at the correct way today. Maybe another time. But what we're going to look at is we're going to look at four baptisms in the Bible where they went to hell. They were baptized. Maybe not the way you think. But they were baptized. They were immersed in H2O water and they died and went to hell. And there are people today, they will be immersed, they will be baptized, they will be sprinkled, they will pour it. It will be holy water, it will be salt water, it will be fresh water, it will be bottled water, it will be river water, it will be ocean water, it will be whatever kind of water. And without faith and belief in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you can be baptized all you want. Without the heart believing that Jesus Christ died and suffered for you and paid the penalty for your sins. Baptism will just get you into hell. And you'll wish you had a drop of that baptism water to cool your tormented tongue. So Genesis chapter 7, verse 17. This is Noah's flood. And the flood was 40 days upon the earth, and the waters increased and bared up the ark and was lifted above the earth. And the arks prevailed and were increased greatly upon the earth. The waters get higher and higher. I gotta apologize. I have, to, I have to drink, keep my mouth void. And the waters prevailed. And the waters prevailed exceedingly upon the earth, and all the high hills and that were under the whole heaven were covered. It's a worldwide flood. And all flesh died that moved upon the earth, both fowl, birds, cattle, moo, beasts, giraffes, and every creepy thing, cockroaches, And creepeth upon the earth, and every man, except for the eight that's in the ark. All in whose nostrils the breath of life, and all that was in the dry land died. And then every living substance that was destroyed, which was upon the, the face of the ground, both man and cattle and creepy things, and followed to heaven, they were destroyed from the earth. And Noah only remained, and they that were with him in the ark. Man, in Noah's time of the flood, were baptized. They were immersed. They were sprinkled. They were dipped. They were rained upon. They got wet. And they died and went to hell. Now, wait a minute. Watch this one. Who did not die? And go to hell. The ones that were dry, the ones that didn't get wet, 
Noah, his wife, his sons, and their wives. Noah wasn't immersed. Noah wasn't sprinkled. Noah wasn't sprinkled. Poured. Noah was in the ark dry. And he was saved. And everybody outside of that ark that would not get into the ark were baptized with the judgment of God and are in hell today. Baptized. And every single one of them all of them only had a little drop of that thing called rain. Is that what it was called? Rain? I didn't know what rain was. I think it was called rain. Oh, we could have just a little drop of that rain. Cool our tongue. Exodus 14 23 And the Egyptians pursued went in after them into the midst of the sea that's the Red Sea now, God has parted this big body of water. You can look on the map called the Red Sea. In the midst of the Red Sea, God parted. There was a highway. A way through the Red Sea that the, the, the sea floor bottom was dry. Israel walked through the Red Sea. And the Egyptians were like, hey, let's go, guys. Let's go get them. Even Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud, and troubled the host of the Egyptians, and took off their, their chariot wheels, and they dragged them heavy, so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighteth for them against the Egyptians. He's been fighting for them all along. And the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea, the Red Sea, and the waters may come upon the Egyptians, upon the, their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, the Red Sea. The sea returned to its strength and went back to where it was. When the morning appeared, the Egyptians fled against it. And the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh came into the sea after them. And there remained not so much as one of them. Children of Israel walked on dry land in the midst of the sea and the waters were a wall unto them to the right hand to the left. It's just a, a wall, a wall, dry ground, a wall. You know, little children poking their hands in the water. <coughs> Look, Daddy, this is cool. Chapter 15, verse 4. 15, 4. Pharaoh's chariots and his hose had he cast into the sea his chosen captains also drowned in the Red Sea. Here's, here's another baptism. The Egyptians and Pharaoh. They're in the midst of the sea. There's a wall of water around them. And when Israel comes out the other side and, and the Egyptians are in the midst of the sea, God says, Moses, take your rod Put everything back together again. Moses takes the rod. The Red Sea closes up. Pharaoh and his horsemen, his army, are immersed in the Red Sea. They have been baptized in the Red Sea. And they, like the men and women of Noah's day, the Egyptians are in hell and they were immersed. 
and God's people are right there when it happens. There will be people, you'll have the church around you, you'll have an assembly of people around you, and you get baptized. And if it's done without faith in Jesus, you're going to die and go to hell. I don't care how many godly, I don't know how many saved, I don't care how many. If your means of salvation is you had something to do with water and baptism in mercy, sprinkled pork, and you have not believed on Jesus with your heart. You said a prayer and you were baptized. You can go to hell. Noah preached to the people. Get in the ark. They didn't get in the ark. They were baptized, died, and went to hell. Pharaoh's army knew that that children of Israel and Moses were of Jehovah. And the children of Israel are there to witness. And they sang a song. A Pharaoh and his army have been baptized in the Red Sea. They're dead and they're in hell. So, we have the world and we have the Egyptians baptized and they're in hell. Baptism didn't save them. Paul goes on to say that Israel was baptized in the Red Sea. Paul gives us the conclusion that not only was the water, the, the, the Red Sea a wall, but there was also a kind of dome like the Jordan River. The water was a wall to the right and to the left, and there was water over their heads. Israel went through the Red Sea, baptism, baptized, and they were dry, like Noah. And all around Noah was water. Yet Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives were dry, and they were saved. Except the feet that Israel walked on all around, except behind them and in front of them, to the right and to the left and above their heads, Israel go through the Red Sea, end up on the other side, and they're alive and well. The world was baptized, Pharaoh and, his, and the Egyptians were baptized, and the world and Pharaoh and the Egyptians went to hell. Baptized. Acts. Acts chapter 1, verse 16. Through Acts 16. Acts 1 16. Now Judas has died, he killed himself. We know he sold out. He threw the 30 pieces of silver down at the priest's feet. He went and hung himself. Peter, we're missing an apostle. We got to fill this spot of Judas. Men and brethren, the scripture must needs be fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost spanked, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spanked. Concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Okay. For he was numbered with us, one of the twelve. Obtained part of this ministry. Now this man, Judas, purchased a field with a reward of iniquity, thirty pieces of silver. Falling headlong, he burst asunder, his body ripped open in the mist. And all his bowels gushed out. <laughs> Judas. And it was known to all the dwellers of Jerusalem. 
insomuch as the field is called in the proper tongue achillium, that's to say the field of blood. This is where poor people would be buried now. For it's written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, let no man dwell therein, and his bishop, his office, let another take. That's what they're doing right now. Wherefore, these men, you got two men right now, which accompanied us with all the time, the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. Now, to be an apostle, you need three things. Number one, in Acts one twenty one, is you had to be part of the earthly ministry of Jesus. The three, the, the three and a half years that Jesus was in a public ministry, these men accompanied him. I think Paul was in that group as a Pharisee. Not for Jesus, but against him. But that's something else. Number two, you had to see the resurrected Christ, which all these men did. In Acts chapter, I mean, at the close of the Gospels, they saw Jesus come up to the upper room with the door closed. Paul saw the resurrected Jesus on the road to Damascus. There's a third. Which will show that Paul was beginning with the baptism of John. So an apostle had to be baptized of John the Baptist. So Paul was baptized by John. Unbeliever. And then it said witness of the resurrection. That means you had to see. You had to be in the earthly ministry of Jesus. You had to be baptized of John's baptism. And you had to see the resurrected Christ. That's why there's no apostles today. Anybody who proclaims to be an apostle, you blew two of them. And don't tell me you saw the resurrected Jesus today. Hey, you're full of it. But look at that. The baptism of John. Judas was baptized and John baptized by immersion. We know that. And Judas died and went to hell in his own place. And he had a public ministry with Jesus. He, he had the, the, the power of healing. He had the power of resurrection. He had the power of signs and wonders. And he went out and preached the gospel to the Jews. He was baptized of John. He walked with Jesus for the, for the three-year ministry. And he saw the resurrected Jesus. And he died and went to hell. Baptized. And there will be people out there, well, you know, I was a church member. And I was baptized. And without the faith and belief in Jesus, you went to, you're going to or are in hell today. Oh, well, I'm a pastor of the church. I've been baptized and Unless you have faith in Jesus, you can be baptized all you want. You can preach all the messages you want. <coughs> you can talk in tongues without faith and belief in Jesus. You'll die and go to hell. Judas. All the world heard the preaching of Noah. They rejected it. And they were baptized unto death, are in hell today. All the Egyptians knew that Israel were God's people. They saw the power of God in all the plagues. And they were baptized in the Red Sea and went to hell. Judas, three years with Jesus, he heard the greatest preacher of all the world, Jesus. He healed. He had miracles. 
He rose people from the dead. He preached to the Jews. He saw the resurrected Jesus. And he was baptized by John the Baptist. And he died and went to hell. Matthew. Now this one here is very much screwed up. I thought it would be important to look at it. Matthew 3.11. Kind of a side note. But I indeed baptize you with water and repentance. John the Baptist saying this. But he that is coming after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. Alright, here we go. He, will, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Now the Pentecostals, you got to be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. You're going to have the baptism of fire and the Holy Ghost. You can't have both. Look at verse 12. Whose fan is his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor, gather his wheat into the garner, those that are saved, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire of, the, of verse 11. You are either saved by the Holy Ghost today, through Jesus Christ. If you are baptized with fire, an unquenchable fire, that's the lake of fire. That is hell. The Holy Ghost, you know, a baptism of the Holy Ghost and a baptism of fire. You can't have both. And a lot of the Pentecostals are going to get the baptism of fire. They are going to go to hell. And they're baptized by water. Because they have not believed on Jesus. This baptism is of the whole. I've been baptized by the Holy Ghost. He's in me. He dwells in me because I have put my faith and trust in Jesus. I am never going to be baptized with fire. Never. Especially unquenchable fire. And to be baptized with fire is you are fully immersed in fire. Now they'll go run over to Acts 2, the tongues of fire. They weren't immersed in fire. I think the fire sat on their shoulders, was it? There's a big difference. One is salvation, and one is damnation. 